welcome back it's still morning crossfire and of course uh, PPDC Budeshi um, finally uh, we're going to begin that right now we had a few issues with our shuttling in the studio and uh, that uh, set us back a few minutes but uh, we'll still have our full 30 minutes uh, if our guests will oblige us this morning uh, we're not sure how that is going to work out but uh, um, hopefully we will be uh, able to do that. Uh, we have Mboho E. Enno, uh, Program Manager, Advocacy and Humanitarian, uh, Premium Times. Good morning. Good morning, Joshua. Thank you very much for being here, for being here on time. And we also have Ijoma Okereke, uh, Premium Times Center for Investigative Journalism here this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, sir. All uh, right. Um, all right, so of course, uh, with the 2019 elections almost coming to an end, of course, almost coming to an end, we've got a rerun coming in a few days. Um, it's imperative that we assess the level of citizens' participation during the elections, and more importantly, after the elections, uh, discussing citizens' social accountability as regards participation with, uh, uh, you know, the, the governing process. All right, so citizens' participation post-2019 elections is what we're talking about today. Okay, so since uh, the PTCIJ served as observers during the elections, can you kindly tell us what your general observation of the elections were? Um, who will be going with that? Ijoma? Want to go? Or uh, Umbo? Okay, so let me take that off. Okay. Thank you, Fortune. Um, the PTCIJ, uh, that the Premium Time Center for Investigative Journalism, mm -hmm. uh, was in a partnership with the um, Center for Democracy and Development. Um, together, we deployed um, observers on the field okay. across, uh, for us, about 22 states of the Federation. Um, one of the things, some of the things we noticed during the general elections mm -hmm. were um, delayed opening of polls, mm -hmm. non-functionality of um, the card readers, poor capacity of INEC had ox staff, ox staff and, and all, all mm. of these mm. issues. Uh, there were also cases of insufficient electoral materials. materials. Wow. Um, so some of the other issues we also observed was um, intimidation by um, security forces. And of course, that also uh, brings into play the uh, intimidation by thugs, political mm. thugs mm. across the Federation. I mean, but mostly down south. Down south. Way that was highly um, reported down south. Yeah. Well, um, okay, so these are, uh, you know, just picking up on some yeah, of the some activities, of the, these are some of the um, most glaring challenges. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's talk about the participation of the citizen in the process right now. Um, uh, to what degree would you say that citizens participated in this process? Uh, generally, the 25th, uh, 2019 elections, um, as reports have it, is the has the lowest level of participation in terms of voters turnout and uh, voting. The uh, lowest? Yeah. Wow. Uh, that's about 30. Even uh, though we had the highest um, enrollment number, of, number uh, uh, you yeah. know, a number of people collecting their PPCs and all that. Yes, we had about 35.6% um, of those people mm -hmm. uh, coming out coming this out. time, which is far lower than what we had in 2015, which oh. was 43.7%. Um, this is a decline. If, uh, they, they have actually been a constant decline, I think, from 20, 2011. And yeah. then um, uh, this is not really uh, talking to the progress we are making in our democracy. Uh, part of the things we need to achieve as a nation in terms of democracy is also to witness the uh, increased turnout of voters during the elections and also. A, um, uh, we also noticed that there was so much social media engagement mm. on the part of mm -hmm. say, um, citizens, but that does not, did not it translate not to actual voters. Mm. So we seem to be having more youth engaging themselves, I mean, what we can call uh, social media warlords or social mm. media, but on the actual day of election where it all matters, they are nowhere to be found. Mm. So we need to work, I mean, retrace our steps Let's have, um, going forward, meta uh, interaction uh, with the, uh, the polling unit, mm -hmm. have um, better interactions off the social media. Okay. And which will also translate, translate into the increased 
uh, and better, uh, transparent, and uh, fair election. All right, uh, Joma, let's bring you in here. Um, what can we do to boost citizen participation in electoral processes? I mean, he spoke about the social media angle. Um, can we use the social media as a tool? What, what do we do? Because people need to come out and vote for us to be able to, you know, see that level of participation. Well, I think before people can actually come out to vote and come out like with so uh -huh. much enthusiasm, uh -huh. that was before the polls were even cancelled. For us to get that back uh -huh. is for the government to actually deliver. So before the um, election was postponed, we saw how the citizens were eager. There was uh -huh. much force and much talk about the election. And then come that the three hours of the election, the election was postponed. So it kind of killed their morale, if I will use that word. So the government has to be more... Um, more um, deliberate about its deliverables. That's what I would say. Because if they are not um, um, deliberate about it, the government has to be deliberate. Yeah, uh -huh. that's just uh -huh. basically uh -huh. it. Uh -huh. Okay, so the government being deliberate, but you, you wanted to add to that? Yeah, to add to that, uh, uh, one of the ways the government can be deliberate is there also um, making it obvious by prosecution of electoral offenders. Let's not just hear that X number of people have been arrested uh. due to electoral violence. I mean, uh, in electoral uh, uh, for electoral violations. Let's hear of people that have been convicted, and that will serve as a deterrent uh. for others that want to um, emulate them. Then, uh, one of the challenges we had this year was um, more of delay in distribution of electoral materials. If INEC wants to uh, be better in 2023, we need to start the preparations now. Let's not wait until six months, seven months before INEC can get approval for their budget or get um, begin to do things that is meant for that year elections. Everything, every technology INEC wants to deploy in 2023. There are guard mm -hmm. elections mm -hmm. before then. Before then. All the experimentations can be done with the standard elections. Kogi's governorship election is coming up in November. November, yeah. What is it that INEP wants to bring to the table in November? I mean, in 2023, start with the governorship elections in Kogi. Experiment. Mm -hmm. Make your corrections. The next, uh, before the Anambra, the Oshun, the Ekiti elections come before 2023, you would have been able to. Part, um, uh, perfect, perfect this process, the yeah. processes that you need to uh, um, um, that you need to make uh, for a free and fair elections. That for, the other thing we need to do is uh, we are clamoring for um, electronic voting. Nigerians are asking for electronic voting to be put in place. This is the time to start also experimenting with electronic voting. A uh, few weeks to the elections, few months to the elections, the president declined accent to the electoral amendment bill. People saw it as a way of political, um, the gaining political mileage. Mm -hmm. Now the elections are over. Mm -hmm. This is the best time for the president to send back the bill to the National Assembly for all the corrections that to he noticed. Mm -hmm. Then he accents to the bill long before the next, next, next general elections. Mm. That will go a long way in making 2023 better. Wow. As observers, let's talk a bit about um, the challenges you faced uh, on the field, um, you know, before we get to the, the very next uh, uh, issue here. What, what challenges did you face the most? Uh, Ijo, you want to go with that? Yeah, let me just begin by saying that um, I think the system is beginning to be more alien to us observers. Why do I say that? Because we recorded um, cases of um, observers being prevented from gaining access to coalition centers. We recorded cases of observers attacked or arrested at uh -huh. some point. Yes, and I feel like that alone is a big challenge. If the process is going to be free, fair, and credible, then there has to be external supervisors, so to uh -huh. say internal and external so there's national and there are also international, international. observers yes um, um and then i also say that the 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 INEC officials to need to be open with their processes to the observers as well. Mm. They should not like it still boils down to them being 
um, alien to the observers or being preventive to them, don't, not allowing them to gain access to some of the information they need. Okay. Um, well, uh, let's get to the issue of sustaining, you know, this. The, the, uh, first of all, let's look at the impact um, that it would have if we are able to show up on you know, the participation of citizens in this process. Um, sometimes if people cannot articulate what it is that they gain by engaging, um, they may not be interested in engaging. So what, what, what would you say would be the impact? What drastic impact would we have if we had, for instance, a surge um, from 35.6% like we have to say 70% citizen participation? That would mean better government accountability because at that point you know that the citizens can and uh, can recall members of the National Assembly or uh, lead uh, protests for demands, uh -huh. Uh -huh. campaigns and advocacy for demand for better governance. So the first and foremost, I mean, the most pr uh, important impact they in their main citizen and participation is going to have on governance is that government will become more responsible. The power, we say, belongs to the people. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And the people actually determine who they want to give the power to. So if we have a greater participation of citizens in the electoral process, in the process of electing the officials, there is a high probability that before any government official will uh, think of stealing public funds, you will realize that you will have to go back to the community, to the people, to uh, give more like a report. Mm -hmm. so, but when we do not get involved, and somehow, maybe through vote buying or through bribing of electoral officials and all of that, they get into power they've already paid their dues. Oh. So you don't expect good governance. So basically it's about good governance. The citizens having a voice in how the country is run. Oh. That's the greatest thing about yeah, it. Just, just to add up to what he said, as in for the citizens to be, to be able to hold the government accountable, uh -huh. they need to be empowered with those tools. They need to get involved in the process. They need to know how the government process works. For example, in the project which I'm handling, that is uh -huh. the UDMA project, uh -huh. where we hold government um, accountable. accountable. Um, we, for, for, for them to be part of this thing, they need, they need to know, um, let's say, for example, the lawmakers. They are the ones that are more closer to the citizens. People, yeah. Yes. But, and they dominate projects for the citizens. But most people don't know about these projects. There are capital projects, there are constituency projects, there are ecological projects, and all of these projects are just to make life better for these citizens. And they don't know about it. So they need to know about it. We have over 8,000 data sets that we have um, okay. generated. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And um, there's, we have active um, social media engagement. People just need to get involved and ask questions. And they should not keep quiet. They should not be afraid of victimization. They, don't, they should not feel like when they speak, um, against the government or against um, certain individuals, <coughs> sorry, oh. they will be um, maybe persecuted. No, oh, they need to also know their rights. They need to know their rights. The, the Constitution of Nigeria guarantees us our rights. You can use that as a weapon, use that as your tool to hold them accountable. When you're able to equip yourself with all of this information and you go out there to present it to these people, then you can be able to hold them accountable. Oh. All right. We'll take a short uh, commercial break and then we'll come back and take your final statements before we let you go. We know you are in a, in a uh, fix right now. You need to leave. But uh, let's take your final statements after this. Don't go away. All right. Welcome back. We're still talking uh, post-election situations um, and its citizens' participation post-2019 elections on Budeshi this morning. Um, and of course, we're going beyond our regular timing because of the glitch we had in the beginning. We've had two guests with us in the studio to discuss this. Moho E. Eno, uh, Program Manager, Advocacy and Humanitarian Premium Times, and we also had Ijeoma Okereke, Premium Times Center for Investigative Journalism. Thank you guys, thank you so much for being here. Alright, so um, th we know that there are some very, very um, existing 
seriously existing barriers uh, to citizens' engagement in Nigeria. Can you help us, um, you know, you expand on that a little bit and let's, let's uh, see what the barriers are and what can be done to handle them? Well, um, first of all, I would say there's this, um, will I use the word poverty of the mind? Oh. We need to start the orientation from ourselves. The system may not really favor us in trying to do that, Okay. But we need to have a change of our mindset that um, the system can actually still work. Uh, uh. So there's poverty of the mind. People are, are, are kind of not conscious about the processes and so do not re re really want to get involved. And even do, when do you do think do the social media could be adding, uh, you know, it could be helping with that, um, that education? I really don't think so because from the beginning when, when we talked about people participation yes. in the election, yes. it was more on social media and then on the actual day, the, there was low turnout. So even the social media may not, may not be translating yes, to actual yes, information. Yes. Mm. So even if even if citizens now decide to actually conscientize themselves about it, there is also the part that um, they may not have the adequate knowledge mm. in the pro of the processes. So if you don't have the knowledge, also you cannot get involved. If you're not involved, you become um, out of the whole thing. And then at the end of the whole day, you come and start talking that the government did this, the government did not do that, and all of that. So it starts from us. And then there's also fear of intimidation, fear of persecution, like mm -hmm. I stated earlier. Mm -hmm. Then there's also lack of trust in the system. Those, I think, are the barriers that, that, um, that hinders citizens' participation. Mm -hmm. well, so what, what do we do? Uh, well, basically, it's uh, uh, trying to address these issues one after the other. First and foremost, um, it's about, just like Ijoma said, personal commitment, personal decision to contribute positively to the system, to pos contribute positively to the process. After that, you, we also need to get a commitment, a sort of commitment from the electoral umpires themselves, maybe the government, I mean, as well. We need to also have a situation where um, the government is going to be sincere in her desires to make electoral processes in Nigeria free and fair. Mm. That starts from the process of uh, I mean, uh, appointment of electoral empires. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That also uh, moves from the electoral empires being uh, open with their processes so that monitors and uh, the community, the, the, both Nigerians and the international communities can see to the fact that there is a real attempt at progress here. Mm. Then uh, for the citizens, we also contribute, taking away these barriers, we need to move from the social media mentality to actually beginning to engage our leaders our elected officials mm -hmm. at the community level. Just like my colleagues talked about a few minutes ago, we have the UDMA platform, we have the Budishi platform, we have a couple of other accountability platforms in Nigeria. How much do Nigerians know about this platform? How much do Nigerians know the kind of information they can get from these mm -hmm. platforms? Mm -hmm. That is the starting point. When you read, when we read, and seek for knowledge, we will find. So it's about us consciously beginning to think of the ways for us to engage our leaders. We ask questions. At that point, uh, the fear of intimidation oh. will be overcome. The fear of my vote does not count will also be overcome. Because by the time you begin to ask questions, you'll be more interested in making sure that the next cycle of election that oh. comes People that will speak your mind will be, are the ones that are elected. Wow. Okay, that said, um, would you want to add any last words uh, as, as we close this? Well, I would, just, I would just like to tell Nigerians, everyone listening right now, that you don't have to wait for the next four years to get involved. Oh. You need to start now. We have new people that have come on board, new elected officials, even at the state level, at the national level. Start now. Watch them, see what they are doing, participate, ask them questions, 
don't fold your arms and feel like I'm not affected. Uh, because as long as you are here, you're also part of the system. And whatever happens at the top, it also gets down to the bottom. So we cannot just fold our hands, get involved in the process. Uh, Empower yourself with the right tools and information you need to hold these people accountable. What, what does the Udeme platform do? Well, Udeme is a social accountability platform that okay. um, hold lawmakers or governments accountable on how funds released for public pro um, projects. How do citizens take advantage? Well, we have the Udeme um, NG, that's on, on the site, so, yeah, site www.udeme.ng. We also have a very active social media presence on Twitter, Udeme NG. So citizens can go there. You have lots of information there you can use to empower yourself. All right. So, so uh, just to add on how the citizens can take uh, advantage, advantage of the Udeme platform, we have this social active social media engagement where we um, annually, I mean, based on annual constituency project, we mm. do an infographics that mm. explains what each lawmaker's constituency is meant to do, how much was budgeted, mm. and all of that. So you can pick that infographics and begin your engagement of your um, lawmaker mm, from there. So for me, my last word will be, let's move from the social media mentality and get, that's for citizens, and get to the community level engagement of our stakeholders, our politicians, our fellow youth, fellow citizens. And for the government, I mean for the electoral empire, let us begin the process of preparation for 2023 elections now. Mm -hmm. mm. Let's begin now. The time is now. And of course, no better time than to begin to uh, ask questions, get on those platforms and to ask uh, and to check, you know, where you can be relevant in this engagement that we're talking about. For the PPDC, it's budeshi.ng, um, right? Yes. Budeshi.ng, um, you can also get on that platform and you'll find so much information with which you can engage, ask questions, you know, ask the right questions because a lot of people are asking questions. It, it now matters whether that question is, will give you the kind of answer that empowers you or not. But we want to say thank you to our guests in the studio this morning who um, graciously gave us some extra time um, in the studio. Mbo Eno, thank you very much. Um, thank you for uh, PTCIJ. Um, and also Ijoma Okeke of PTCIJ. That's Okereke. Ijoma Okereke of PTCIJ. Thank you so much. It was a wonderful time having you in the house. And uh, to our team from PPDC, we also say thank you, mercy, and uh, who's that? Tokwe. Tokwe. Yes, mercy and Tokwe. Thank you so much, uh, guys, for being here. All right, that brings us to the end of Budeshi for today. Um, we'll have a, a bit more coming your way. And then at 9, it'll be time for Sports Drive. Don't touch your dial. We'll be right back.